may be the fastest, most advanced way to cross the Atlantic, but those who live near the runways at Kennedy Airport claim it's just the noisiest plane in the world. And as the British Airways supersonic jet made its graceful approach to New York today over the roofs of their homes, some of them were out to make yet another protest. The protesters had hoped to picket all five approach roads to the airport, but the turnout was small, several points were uncovered, and their appeal to airport workers not to cross the picket lines was ignored. But it has met the noise standards, the noise no, it hasn't. by Kennedy Airport. No, it hasn't, because it has diverted itself. It knows where the black boxes are. They had a prescribed course, and they have not had a, they had a simulated situation which is, not, uh, com which is not with the conditions that they are. But commercial flights do start today. Doesn't this mean that, in effect, you've lost? No, we haven't lost. We never lose. The American people will never lose because the American people have been fighters all their lives. But despite the opposition, Europe was suddenly four hours closer to New York as Air France made the first historic landing of a supersonic commercial flight at Kennedy Airport. One minute, 30 seconds later, Britain's Concorde was brought in by Captain Walpole for another perfect touchdown. The two planes taxied together for 300 yards across the airfield before peeling off to their respective terminals. Supersonic transport for fair-paying passengers had at last arrived at New York. British Airways had, in the words of their deputy chairman, taken the real bite of the Big Apple. The general mood was summed up in just one gesture by the man who flew the British Concord in. The Nobel Committee cited Bellow for his human understanding and his subtle analysis of contemporary culture. Bellow's fictional work is known for characters who are mixed up, people struggling to make their lives more meaningful. How much, we asked Bellow, is his own life reflected in the characters he creates? Well, to be all those fellows, I would have to be afflicted with a dissociation of personality or some form of schizophrenia. Um, I don't think any novelist can really avoid putting something of himself into books, but to be literally faithful to the facts of one's life is very difficult, and I don't have enough skill for it. But in terms of uh, the insecurity felt by many of your characters, their difficulty in just getting a toehold in the world... Well, in in insecurity is about as rare as, as being uh, uh, two-eyed, so... <laughs> I don't think that distinguishes anybody.